The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the April 10th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find a gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered. Let those fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in the tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow off 18 points, trade out at 26, 132. The rest of the indices are in the green, mean and green. S&P's up five, NASDAQ 100 up 22. Russell is up 15 points. That is the leader percentage-wise to the upside, nearly one full percentage point. Gold is up a half a percent. That's six bucks and change. Silver up five cents. Lights we crude up 70 pennies, trading out at 64.65. Uh, lead the charge the upside. It is uh, AutoZone. 17 buck Rooney's booking holdings, a uh, uh, neck and neck race there. It's up, well, not neck and neck. It's only up $12 versus 17. Regenerative Pharmaceuticals is up nine. Um, to the downside, it is up WD 40. Uh, apparently, greasing the skids down four and a half percent or seven bucks and change. Wave Life Sciences off nearly seven dollars or 17 percent. Humana down about seven, lift off five bucks, trading well below the support level, I believe. Uh, meaning the low from a few days ago. Yeah, there you go, 6610 out there. So, uh, uh, happy to, I won't say I'm happy to see that, but uh, when I was uh, given an interview yesterday um, uh, and for a firm down in the New York Stock Exchange, the question was, should I buy Lyft now? And my answer was absolutely, positively not. Lyft was going to go test the lows, uh, 6610, and possibly bust through it to create that A to B equal CD to the downside. And that, in this instance here, is what I would say Lyft is doing. But let's not spend too much time in an IPO that's been trading here for just a handful of days. Instead, let's go take a look at the markets out here. So what are the markets doing? Well, the interesting thing here is we just uh, go take a look at, uh, is this where we want to start? Well, maybe, maybe not. Let's start here. And what I mean by here, we're just using Stevie's synthetic contracts only because it's got everything populated out here. What you're going to see, and I don't recall if we covered this yesterday, maybe we did, maybe we saw that there was a new profile that was beginning to form in the ES Mini. Well, it's there. It's lock, stock, and barrel, whatever that means. What we do know, and what it means is at the top of the box, that's 2,900, even Steven out there is resistance and the bottom of the box 2860 is support you won't see a change in trend signal until you see a close below the bottom of a daily profile all that's occurred here yesterday 
and this morning is a test of that point of control, that point of control with inside that box. That is where both buyers and sellers believe there is fair value. And they're all teaming up at the 2876 level. If we take a look at the NQ, she too, or he too, formed a new daily market profile. Resistance there, 76.33. The high today, 76.30. Also, price has only been able to push down to its center of the box, its point of control, 75.77. If, in fact, price could move below that level, we'd be watching 74.63. Ain't going to be a change in trend until you see a close below the low of that box. In other words, price is just consolidating between support and resistance. Our number one, numero uno responsibility, yours and mine, is to be able to identify support and resistance. Why? Well, because in a uptrending market, pullbacks to support are nothing more than a retracement to support. I know it sounds kind of silly, eh, but it's more than just silly. It is downright great information. If you take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract, it too has a new profile. That formed three days ago. The top of that box is 26509. It's been the weakest link, so to speak, out here. Now, not so to speak. We're just going to call it the weakest link. Um, and uh, But uh, weak as it may be, eh, there ain't no weakness in it until it closes below the bottom of its box. Bottom of its box is 26017. That's the number to be watching. Take a look at that Russell 2000. Got the schnot kicked out of it. I don't know how you do that. I just know that it happened. And when it did, it, we thought maybe, just maybe, it was going to form a new daily profile. It did not, even though that bar turned orange. It must have known yesterday was just a fluke. And there's nothing wrong with fluke. Uh, it's a pretty good fish. But if we take a look at the flukiness here inside the Russell 2000, right now trading above the top of its profile. Let's get rid of that signal at the bottom. The top of that profile box, which is a bearish structured box out there, is 1577.70. You're trading at 1579 right now. It looks like the Russell 2000. You just can't keep a good man down. If we take a look at what the Russell 2000 did on an hourly chart out here, we're going to see that when it bottomed, it formed that TD setup nine count. It did it on bar number eight. It did that yesterday. We always pay attention to bar number eight, nine, and the bar following nine. That took place at 4 p.m. yesterday in the cash market. That identified the bottom. What you can see right now on a 60-minute basis, maybe this is just deja vu, but if we take a look at deja vu, we can see that uh, at 1 p.m., we got to count number eight. Will that be the high in the Russell 2000? Or will it be bar number nine? Or will it be the bar after number nine? I don't know the answer to that. What I do know is the upside target on this is that TDST line. That's that green solid line on your screen. I know you see two of them. The one I'm referring to was from 9 o'clock in the morning on April 9th, and the high there, 1583.10. That's the real PSD resist don'ts. Now, I will share with you that when you form this nine count, should it form bars 8, 9, in this case here, 9, or the bar following 9, and should that pattern form below this resistance line. That's what we looked at, that green line out there. Well, that would then kind of give you a one-upsman to the sellers out there because price never made it back to its resistance level. We don't know if that's the way that it's going to play out out here right now, but we'll pay attention to it, both you and I. Why? 60-minute chart for the Russell 2000 equity futures contract. It's made the pri a prior high with that pattern and a low that we just took a look at. We might as well pay attention to it. Good the Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-76. Welcome back, uh, folks. So our first request is to take a look at the uh, GDX. That's a mining sector, uh, ETF-wise, um, out here. And uh, for, for for the mining sector, let's go take a look at gold and uh, first get our bearings around uh, gold. What's gold doing right now? We can see here and take a look at gold in all the major currencies. By major, we're talking about U.S. dollar, euro, yen, and the uh, Great British Pound. What we can see here, gold is rising in terms of dollars. Gold is rising in terms of euros. Gold is rising in terms of yen. Uh, gold is sideways to slightly lower in terms of that pound sterling. So what do we know? Buyers, 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 and uh, kind of of, uh, just sitting there on the sideline so that's a good thing now you've got gold right now this is the gold contract now this is the this is this is my synthetic contract so I won't give you the number it's headed towards its center of its uh, box out here that's going to be different though if we take a look at the gold contract so let's go take a look at the gold contract let's do excuse me let's go take a look at the June contract let's keep our profiles out here I'm on populate, and here you can see that the center of the box is 13, 15, 40. We're at 13, 14, 50. It almost sounds dyslexic out there, which is a beautiful thing because you get to see things differently. And then trading and investing, boy, do you want to see things differently? Now, what it was, what it is, what it be, what we're looking at out here says this could be a level of resistance, or should be, quite frankly. It's the center of the box, which, quite frankly, as I said, frankly twice. I hardly say frankly once in a day, and now I just got it three times in a row. 
But quite frankly, let's go for a fourth out there. That center of the box is truly in the center. So this is a level where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value. Maybe difficult to get above that, but getting above 13, 15, 40, not by a penny, not by a dime, not by a nickel, but by several dollars. Would our points would at least go ahead and send price up into the 13, 35 level? Hey, it prices above the top of the daily profile. Now it just has to deal with those weekly, those intermediate term uh, traders and investors out there. But it looks fairly good, gold. So if gold looks good, and that was the daily time frame, what is it that the GDX is doing out here? And the answer is not much. But if we do take a look at it, here's what it's doing. Here's what we know. The GDX is above resistance. That's the top of that daily profile. So just like gold is above the top of its daily profile, so too is the GDX. Now, where the GDX is likely headed to is its all-time high. Not its all-time high. Come Slap me silly out there. It's 52-week high level. And that was from the trading session out here of February 20th. And that's between 2314 and 2370. Volume up there is not too shabby 62 million shares out there last time price was up there was 58 million shares that looked like and there was a close into it on march 25th the next day was only 41 million shares and then there was a rejection with lighter volume on march 27th that sent price lower as we know so uh, volume wise today and there is a little gap out here that was uh formed between march 27th and the 28th out there uh, but 2314 looks like the target and inside there maybe 2370 that's what the daily time frame is showing you and i now the weekly says 23 buckaroonies even steven that's the top of its box that's resistance out here that's another level to watch 23 even and i mean steven because if it could see price close above that level well that would be another bullish thing this is a bearish structured box being that center line at 22 bucks it's really 21.96 uh, is closer to the top than it is to the bottom out here monthly wise uh, things are above resistance all looks well there now let's go take a look at stevie's other charts because they've got other tools worth watching out here and we'll just start with the monthly since we began or since we ended with the monthly looking at the e-signal chart, you'll see this little blue line out here. It's not really a line, it's dashes. Uh, can you call dashes a line? That may have probably uh, a type of a line. But that line for line dancing out here is priced out at 22.93. You're trading at 22.90. Closing above 22.93, that little, that is a that is a little Stevie resistance out there. You gotta have some nice spices for your pizza pie. And that is a key level to be watching on a monthly basis. A close over that level says, I want to move higher. So we'll watch that when we take a look at the GDX. But so far, so good on the monthly time frame horizon for the GDX. If we go look at the weekly out here, you're going to see that green solid line. That one's a solid one versus the dash. And that is the resistance set up by that Tommy DeMarc set up uh, trend uh, set up by nine count. So that's your trend line. That's your resistance line. And that's at 22.93 as well. We've got a couple lines at that 22.93 level. So we'll watch that. It's trading up into resistance. Resistance. Above resistance on a weekly basis is muy uh, mucho what? Uh, muy bueno. We'll just go with the muy bueno thing. And now if we take a look at the daily time frame chart, we can see we got a green line. That's Stevie's green line out there. That means the price oscillator is above zero because price is above the green line. So this too looks pretty good. We can see a little dashed blue line out there identifying that next level of resistance you're not going to believe it what it's not it's not the price that i gave you on the other two instead this one is 2335 those are levels that the gdx needs to overcome as it runs its race higher and as long as gold is moving higher, so too should the mining equities. So, Mr. Z, inside the tiger's den, uh, that is my uh, bisect and dissect of the GDX. Let me know if there's anything else that you need out there. Now, Peter in the tiger's den, Peter was interested in taking a look at the advanced decline data out here. But if we take a look at it, 
we're going to look at two forms of that advanced decline data. The first one's going to be the AD line out here. Now, this is just simply a summation uh, going back as far as I possibly could in my charts out there. So don't pay attention to the number, which says 479,360. That's a doozy out there. But what it is and how you would pay attention to that number is that number is above the all-time high which is 479263. So you got the advanced decline line at a new all-time high. What do we know about that? Only once, only once has the New York Stock Exchange made a significant high when the advanced decline line was at a new all-time high. <laughs> Something to think about. If we take a look at the advanced decline oscillator, let's take a look at this advanced decline data. And then just uh, looking at its 19 and 39 day, the difference between those two, its exponential moving average, that gives us the oscillator reading. And that is back above zero. Yesterday, there was a slight close below zero. And what you and I know is that on day two, following that close, you need to see follow through. Because if you don't, the interpretation is very easy. Buyers always were in control. It was just, uh, yesterday was just simply a third down and long. And you can see what they did today. And they made that first down as that advanced decline oscillator reading is above zero. Of course, this is an end of day indicator. So let's not let the 126 p.m. reading be the be all to end all. But as we speak right now, the advanced decline line, well, Peter, it looks pretty darn good, as does the advanced decline oscillator. And we'll couple that with a spot volatility index down below the 50-day exponential moving average level of 1522. In summary, there's a top. The signals aren't showing it. Steve Rhodes with TFNN.com. We'll be right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts 
Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's off about 10 points. S&P's up uh, 6. Uh, let's go, take, since we're taking a look at market breadth, basically the advanced decline line, let's go look at something we haven't looked at for a while, and that is the market breadth uh, based upon the TAS market profiles. Now, what we have out here, this is a 60-minute time frame uh, chart. We can see that at uh, 10 a.m. this morning, nope, at uh, 11 a.m. this morning, uh, we saw a bullish crossover. What do you mean a bullish crossover? So the green line and the red line in the top panel of my chart out here, what they represent is the uh, number of issues either trading above or below their profiles out here. Uh, we could take a look at the ones trading inside, which happen to be 121 issues as an example. There's 232 issues above the top of the box, so above resistance. 140 below the bottom of the box out there, that would be support. So it gives you a, uh, a an understanding of the uh, market breadth. And you have to say market breadth leans to the positive side, 46% above and 24 within versus 30% below out here. So on the 60-minute time frame, it's in bullish formation. On a 240-minute time frame, you are now getting a positive cross as well. Now, of course, this is not the end of the day. 155 above, 28% or 142 below. Nonetheless, at 131 in the afternoon, the reading is bullish out there. That's important. If you take a look at the uh, daily time frame, the last bullish crossover to occur uh, took place at 12 a.m., and that was on March the 28th out there. So that remains bullish. And if we look at the weekly time frame chart, that is bullish too. And that bullish crossover on a weekly basis, that took place uh, the last one on January the 20th. The 20th? The 20th? Yes. January the 20th out there is when that thing went to all-out bullish mode. That is the S&P 500. But we've got more. And by more, let's go take a look at the NASDAQ 100. We've got the NASDAQ 100. A similar reading is taking place at uh, 10 o'clock this morning, a bullish crossover on the one-hour time frame. Let's look at that four-hour time frame. Never got to bearish. It's been bullish all along. That last bullish crossover taking place on March 28th. That's on the four-hour time frame. Daily time frame, it has been in bullish formation since March 29th out there. It had a brief respite where it was in the hands of the bears. Hey, probably if you blinked, you didn't really even see it. And on a weekly basis out here, that bullish crossover, that took place on January 13th. Um, so that's your market breadth statistics. We take a look at where instruments are trading above or below the uh, bottom of their profile. Now, let's not stop there either. Uh, let's stay with the S&P 500, but let's do it in a different fashion. Let's do it by taking a look at the sectors. All, what is it, uh, 11 of them? That's right, 11, not 9, not 10, but the 11 sectors with inside the S&P 500. The technology sector, XLK, continuing to move higher, flirting right now. It's just a flirter with Stevie's green line. Still looks good, but price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. That just as the hair on the back of our neck, if we have any, should be standing up just a tad because it's always something to watch for. Uh, but right now, no topping confirmation. That's coming from your number one sector inside the S&P 500. Number two sector, I believe, still is the XLV. That's the healthcare sector. This has just been consolidating sideways out here. Price remains above Stevie's green line. It's green. That says you got a rising price oscillator above zero. Ain't nothing bearish about that. That is sector number two in sectornomics. If we go take a look at sector number three, that would be the financial sector. You've got those guys uh, being grilled on the Capitol Hill. That's got to be pretty fun out there because wouldn't you just like to be there going through that experience? For goodness sakes, could there be anything better? There could be. 
The better would be actually being able to ask questions after you've been asked a question by a senator or congressperson. After all, don't they work for you and I? Really, I could swear that the way this game works is they work for both of us. Now, I'm not going to get political, because if I do that, you know uh, that we could get off of track out here. But uh, let's just come back to the financial sector and see that prices trading above Stevie's green line out here. And no real topping pattern uh, that we can see here. Prices above the top of its daily profile. So we're three for three with regard to the sectors uh, the top three sectors inside the S&P 500. But let's not stop there. Let's go to uh, sector number four. I believe it is the XLC. That's dealing with uh, social media type stocks, Facebook and so forth. What are we doing here? Above Stevie's green line, above the top of the profile. Today could be day number eight in that uh, TD setup nine count, but no top there. Let's take a look at what's going on inside the XLY. If we look at it, uh, it did form a TD setup nine count top on bar number eight. That was two days ago, but prices just pushed back to test support. That's Stevie's green line, so this still remains bullish. No wonder when we took a look at the S&P 500 and its market breadth, it's just really confirming what you and I are looking at when we look at the sectors. Now, the industrials, that generated a rose momentum topping pattern out here. It did that when we had the gap to the downside three days ago. In this case here, we'd say that the XLI, the industrial sector, likely headed to support its next level of support that would be 7473 let's not stop there let's go take a look at the utility sector what do we have going on here you can see that today was nothing more than a test and rejection of stevie's green line that's at oscillator and change line at 5833 here price wants to pull back and test 5741 as we get into these sectors though they start representing less than 10 percent of the uh s p 500 here's the energy sector just even though Light Sweet Crude has had a heck of a move out here, what the energy sector, that's the XLE, is dealing with is that solid green line that was established by that Tommy DeMarc set up nine count to the downside. That level is 67.83. There's nothing bearish about the XLE. It just is contending with trying to take out a resistance area out there. Let's go take a look at the XLP. The XLP, what do we got here? All we have in the XLP was price uh, more than a week ago, gap to the downside, pulled back, uh, and did what? Tested support. A bullish structured market profile at 55.13. Right now, today is testing the top of that profile. That looks like 55.95, give or take, um, out there because it's high behind price at 55.86. But it looks like that's a level. The key level of resistance is this dark cloud cover candle from the trading session of. Um, April Day, hey, April Fool's Day, and that's at 56.23 out there. So nothing bearish there. Should we finish it off? Let's do that. Let's take a look at let's take a look at the real estate sector. XLRE. What do we have out here? Really, not much. Just a sideways move, a potential topping signal out here as prices move moving higher to a less relative energy, but no bearish reversal candle yet. So that looks pretty good. And voila, the end of it is XLB out here. And if we take a look at it, uh, still bullish. Still bullish above Stevie's green line. Looks like about 57.13 is what we will call it. So there is the entire sector's readings of the S&P 500. And what we didn't see out here is anything that had some kind of miserable failure going on. When we get back from this next break, we're going to go look at sugar. No sugar tonight in my coffee. Be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. 
The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get the competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, the uh, May sugar contract for uh, Ruby inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And uh, Ruby, let's start with the daily time frame, daily time frame chart, but look at the uh, weekly set of profiles out here. And, you know, when we look at the daily chart, you can see the sideways consolidation that it's been in really for quite some time. You know, we'd say pretty much since the uh, beginning of March. Um, granted, prices above resistance resistance being the top of that box out there at 1254 and the question is what is it that's keeping it in in check out here you know re from a resistance standpoint what is it that's keeping us in check uh, you can see that the uh, top of the weekly profile is 1429 that would be another resistance level quite a bit higher than where we're at now obviously in support would be the 1127 that's looking at the uh, weekly time frames out here but daily you know looks good but just can't find the energy, the sweet tooth, in order to push it higher. And we are in sweet tooth month, I believe. But what month isn't? If we take a look at the uh, four-hour time frame chart out here, 240-minute, uh, your next resistance, because I don't know what time frame it is you're looking at or trading out here. Uh, you've got a, uh, a slight uh, resistance zone at 1284. That's the top of that four-hour time frame chart. Uh, if you were trading based on a two-hour time frame chart, it's dealing with that resistance level at the top of the box right now. It's bearish in structure. That's 1282. Uh, you're trading right now at 1279. So closing above 1282, this is the two-hour time frame, would uh, suggest higher prices would be coming at you. And finally, let's go ahead and look at the one-hour time frame. One-hour time frame says there may be a new profile that is forming as that candle. Well, it's not really a candle. That 
bar has turned orange. Uh, nonetheless, prices below the top of that bearish structured box. That's 1282, and this is going to uh, bar is going to complete in another. Uh, 16 minutes out here. So you'd like to see it close above 1280. Does that help out? There's nothing here that we've seen that answers the question, why isn't uh, sugar um, moving beyond this little consolidation area out here? The next level that I would be watching, Ruby, this is now back to the daily time frame, and we're looking at the high from the trading session of March 19th. I'll give you that as a bit of resistance. You can see these little blue dashed lines out here. This is what is showing us where resistance is and the reasons why. So you can see a little conglomeration. Can I call them a conglomeration? They're just lines out there. Well, either way, we'll call it a congestion zone, and that would say you're looking for, if you're long sugar, uh, you're looking for it to get above and close above 1283. Not that many pennies above where we're at. In fact, this contract here could be a few pennies behind. No, that was a 1281. Yeah, so it's just a few cents higher. 1283 would be a number that you would be looking at. If I put the weekly time frame chart out here for that May contract, what do I see? I don't see anything bearish out here. Um, but I don't see what it is that is a circumventing price from moving higher, in other words, a resistance zone. So I think it all boils down to that uh, daily time frame chart out there uh, for sugar. It did make, by the way, a monthly low out here, that bottom taking place in August of 2018 uh, with nothing other than that nine count pattern out there. So looks like you've got a decent low in place when it comes to uh, sugar out there. And uh, so no sugar tonight in my coffee. Of course, I don't drink coffee. So that also means no sugar tonight in my tea. And each of you know that is from what tune? Uh, from the uh, Guess Who out there. You know, that uh, tune, by the way, that was a combination of two songs. Uh, one written by Ron, Randy Bachman. And uh, who wrote the other song? That's right. B.C. That was Burton Cummings. All right, so what do you want to look at next? It's very quiet in uh, in uh, email land out here. I don't see any, oh, we, I, I take that back. You look and you shall receive. Hector, Hector C. writes in, if you get time, we've got the time right now. NBEV, um, is it going to close the gap it created on Monday before proceeding upward? So let's go take a look at NBEV. Let's go see what kind of gap it has out there, NBEV, for those of you that want to follow along uh, at your home game out here. And let's go see what Hector is looking at. He's asking about, ooh, that's a get That, Hector, Hector and the fuel injectors out here, that's a sign of strength. I don't know what happened for NBEV, but um, is it going to fill that gap? I can't say you bet your sweet bippy out here, but if it does, you want to be a buyer. It would appear that you want to be a buyer. Take a look at that wide-ranging bar accelerating volume on April the 8th. No idea what was behind it, but 66 million shares. It's now pulling back. It is above the daily profile out there. In other words, yesterday was a pullback to really test the profile. Granted, it was a penny or two that it closed below. This morning it pushed lower. Now it's pushing higher. I'd say, Hector, watch today's candle session out here. But it closed about 589. It's cleared its daily resistance. Was there any other pattern that NBEV formed, Hector, uh, that says, hey, bottom's up? And the answer is, yeah, it formed that rose momentum indicator signal, as it did when it formed a high. This is the daily time frame chart. Forms it with what? A shooting star. What do we know about a shooting star? Uh, what we know is that they either work or they don't work. What do you mean by that? Um, well, in this case here, it worked two days later when price got below uh, the uh, Stevie's green line, that oscillator unchanged line. That led to the bottom. That bottom was confirmed with that gap to the upside because that is a bullish pattern, a bullish candlestick. A gap to the upside is bullish. Do not be afraid of gaps. They are your friends. A gap to the downside is bearish. Will it get filled maybe at some point? Is that how you trade it now when you've got this bottoming pattern? Uh, the answer is no, I don't think so. Just make sure you use a wide enough stop. Now, the weakness, if there is a weakness inside of NBEV, and we'll find one for you. All we have to do is look. That's not necessarily true. We just have to look at some other charts, such as the weekly time frame chart, and try to understand, well, what 
did NBEV do? Why did it move to the level that it did and stop? And then what's it doing now? So, Hector, this says maybe, maybe you're onto something. Maybe you've just got a better read on NBEV than uh, Stevie's uh, couple of moments here. But where price ran into resistance, remember we were talking about that little blue dash line out there? Well, in this case here, that's from the candle session on the weekly base of February 22nd, room 222 out there. That price point, by the way, is 6 59 tested it rejected it to close above that well that's a beautiful thing um and right now price is trading right below stevie's green line probably around 596 7 something like that you're at 594 but closing over that well that would be pretty darn bullish but you know ultimately from a weekly standpoint what you're looking for is a close above that high from february 22nd again that was 659 out there i don't know um, you got the monthly chart that is uh, now trading above Stevie's green line here. Not a lot of data. I don't want to waste my time on the monthly time frame chart and the lack of data out here to use that from a signal standpoint. So uh, your question was, will the gap get filled? I don't know that it's going to get filled before you want to take a, uh, a, a trade in it. You got your bottom signal out there. And, uh, and now you've gotten a pullback on a wide ranging bar. That looks pretty tempting to me if you're trying to trade NBEV. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So earlier in the show, we just mentioned uh, Lyft, and uh, I'm going to use two, my two different applications in order to uh, give you an idea of where Lyft is headed to. Uh, number one, and most importantly, and uh, you know, it looks like 2019 is set up to be the year of the IPO, so to speak, out there. And uh, what I don't want you to do is get caught up into all of the uh, marketing blitz that goes on in the media stations. And no matter how good the company is, don't buy the IPO. Do not buy the IPO on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five. Uh, you know, when you, you all the hype out there is nothing more than, and it's as it should be, um, you know, the, the hype, the push into it. They're trying to push out paper. They're moving from private hands to public hands out there. Nothing wrong with that. That's just the natural evolution of what we have. What you've got to know is that eventually, nearly all, not all, nearly all, high significant percentage, the 80s and 90 percent, the IPO, low, the day of the IPO is going to be tested and then some out there. And so you want to be a pattern recognition expert. In this case here, you've got uh, Lyft breaking through a swing point. The swing point on this, even though it's been trading for just a handful of days, would be April 2nd, which did 22.5 million shares. At 1.55 in the afternoon, you're at 16 million shares. What does that set up? It sets up an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of Lyft, a confirmed one, because you're taking out a swing point with volume. The one-to-one -one level is 53.63. Price doesn't have to stop there. Price can make its way down to 47.48. It can go even lower than that. It's uh, like 39.69. I don't know which of these prices. We just know that this is the Stevie progressive tool out here, and as price progresses downward, we'll look for the uh, bulls to let us know whether or not a bottom has formed in lift. But as all these IPOs come out, please get caught up in the hype if you want. They could be the best thing since sliced bread. Facebook was, Alibaba was, Apple was, Google was. They all traded below their IPO lows. Some just take a while. Be patient. And stay tuned, because your favorite polar bear, he's up next. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. I'll see you on uh, Masters Thursday. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com.